Hey YouTube, let's play Quest for Glory 1, also known as Heroes Quest 1. Um, after some keen input from the Let's Play community, I decided to do this Let's Play with uh, voice commentary. I was originally debating whether I should just let the game speak for itself or whether I should comment on top of the game, but no, I will uh, be annotating things as they occur, so let's, without further ado, let's start the game. I hope that people won't be too terribly upset if I uh, just skip over these first couple of screens. They're basically just uh, legalese letting you know that uh, you have the right to uh, to remain silent and uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, etc. I'm just going to skip that. You can read that if you'd like. Um, let me show one thing right off the top. If you click... Uh, this is one very cool thing about the Quest for Glory games that, for whatever reason, didn't get propagated to other uh, other Sierra adventures. I'm not sure why, because it, it is kind of a cool feature. If you right-click with the mouse on anything, meaning you know you click the right mouse button, it has the effect of looking at something, so it gives up a little description of whatever you clicked on, if there is any description to be had. So I just right-clicked on that Scorpion, and it you know shows the little joke. You've discovered the first bug in this game. Uh, let me. Hold on just a sec, let me shift the DOS box window just a little bit so that it's better. There we go, I don't know if that's better or what. But. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to probably be doing that as we go throughout the game. I'm going to right-click on a few things to get some descriptions. And in the true spirit of Let's Play, let's look at the introduction, even though there's not much to it. It's actually called Heroes Quest. Uh, the Sierra later changed the title of the series to Quest for Glory because there is a computer role-playing game called Hero Quest, not Heroes, but Hero Quest. And so, for trademark uh, violation issues or whatever, they went ahead and changed the name to Quest for Glory. So this game is not sold anymore. You can't buy this game uh, because this is, you know, the original Heroes Quest, which. Uh, I'm playing just because it's kind of an artifact. It's sort of the the original. It's sort of like, wow, you were there. You witnessed the uh, the original. So it is a piece of history and antiquity and artifact, kind of like me. And this game was famously made by Laurie and Corey Cole, a husband and wife team. And one thing I forgot to mention, actually, in my let's play of Police Quest Three. Uh, in Police Quest Three, Doctor Ames, the psychiatrist, is played by Corey Cole. So. There you have just another example of the uh, close community that existed among Sierra employees back when Sierra was a good company and made real games. So in this game you can choose one of uh, three different types of characters. You can choose um, the fighter, who is you know the guy with the big sword. You have your magic user, he's the wizard, he casts spells. And there's the thief, he pulls the cape over his face, that's his only skill. Uh, so I'm going to play a fighter, just because that's probably the most straightforward character type to play. And it takes you to this screen, where you can assign points. You have a pool of uh, 50 role-playing game type of character skill points that you can assign. Uh, so I'm going to do that in just a minute. Let me uh, name my character. I'm calling him Late Blight, because that's my name. That's actually my real name. No, it's, it's not. I'm just kidding. That's not my real name. Uh... What I always like to focus on when I start a character in this game is these skills that are zeroed out. Notice that when you start off as a fighter, you have no stealth and you can't pick locks at all. Those are thief skills. So that literally means that for the whole game you're basically bound to not be able to pick any locks at all. You also can't climb and you can't cast magic spells at all. You have no magic ability and there's no, there's no cure for this. There's nothing you can do to give yourself these abilities if you don't start off with them. So what you can do is assign yourself some points, like let's say I want to assign some stealth points. 
I can press the right arrow here, and that gives him 5 stealth points. But notice it chopped off 15 of my points available. So if you bring up something from 0, it'll take away 15 points. So notice I wouldn't have enough points available to give myself all of these abilities. Well, there's a, a trick that you might have um, heard about. Um, it's I guess it's kind of a cheat. It's kind of exploiting a bug in the game. Uh, but I, I can't I can't live with my character not having all possible abilities. I mean, if, if I can't cast magic spells, then that's it. For the whole game, you're doomed to not cast any magic. I just, you know, I can't put up with that. I mean, if, if, my, if my character doesn't have all these skills available, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna crawl into a dark closet somewhere and cry myself to sleep for a few hours, so... Uh, yeah, you can't have that. So, here's the trick. Basically, go ahead and assign yourself five uh, points to you know whatever you want to create the skill of. And besides using the left and right arrow keys, the left and right arrow keys, notice it, it adds or subtracts five points. You can also use the plus or minus keys on the keypad to f kind of fine tune it. See, I'm adding w or subtracting one point at a time. Here's the trick then. Give yourself five points and whatever. Add one with the plus key on the keypad, and then press left arrow to take away five. That's how you can give yourself just one point in that skill, and notice it only subtracted a net total of 11 points from here now. Now if I use this trick on all these other things, right arrow, plus left arrow, right arrow, plus left arrow, and here, now I can just do right arrow, boom, now I have all the skills. And I'm starting off really low, I mean, I have only one point in climbing, pick locks, and stealth. But you can build that up as you go throughout the game, you can increase these points later. So now this character is kind of well-rounded in the sense that he can do anything. If you build him up, uh, if you, you know, exercise his, uh, his abilities and reap the, the fruits of his loins, then... Um, the, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, it, Forget what I just said. Never mind. Uh, I'm gonna. So I have two points left that I can add to uh, something else. I'm just gonna, I guess, put it on weapon use because these guys don't. They're not very good with their weapons most of the time. So, okay, I'm just gonna start the game. So here we go. We we enter this town of Spielberg. It's a very nice little mountain kind of town. It seems like a quaint little town. Uh, sorry, quiet, not quaint. On the porch ahead of you are two people. The standing one is large, rather ugly, and playing with a yo-yo. The seated person smoking a pipe looks like he might be the sheriff, which is probably a good guess because they're both sitting in front of the sheriff's department, this purple door building there. The man with the pipe greets you. Welcome to our town. You're lucky to have made it down from the mountains before the snow blocked the pass again. It's gotten pretty dangerous outside of town, I understand. And, yes, you, the player, will soon find out just how dangerous it has gotten outside of town. Many monsters have been trapped around here with the late snow. Between them and the brigands, we certainly could use a hero around here. I am Sheriff Schultz Meisterson. This is Otto von Guen, my assistant. What do you call yourself? And you can type anything you want, but, um, I don't know, I, I figure I might as well just go with the name that you gave yours. It automatically enters the name that you type at the beginning, so, hey, why not? So I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'm Late Blight. Good luck in your quest, Late Blight. Well, thank you very much. Now, one thing that you want to be aware of in the Quest for Glory games is what you want to do is ask basically everything from everybody. That's like you get points just for asking questions. It, it, it's so important in these games, there's even a keyboard shortcut for it. It's Control A. Watch this. Type Control A and it automatically types in Ask About. So I'm going to ask about. I'll ask about the town. Just walk around and find out for yourself. Yeah, thanks a lot, jerk. That's really helpful. Um, ask about magic. Tell me about some magic. Just next to the inn is a small magic shop. The owner, Zara, will let you in if you have some abilities in that area. She's a strange one, all right. But notice, I got a point. Ka-ching! See, now I have two points. Uh, I got one point just for walking into the town. It's like you start off with one point just for playing the game. They, they like you playing the game that much, they give you a free point just for starting. And then you get an extra point for asking stuff from the sheriff. And you can do that with other characters in the game, too. You, you go asking questions from other characters, and you'll get points just for asking questions. It's like, how easy is that? Uh, and I have wasted almost ten minutes just introducing the game, so I should probably stop here. I'm going to save the game. And we've made so much progress. I mean, we wouldn't want to lose all this progress. We, we, we started the game. L look at that. I mean, we, we, we started playing. I mean, you can't, you can't beat that with a stick, right? So, we, yeah, we wouldn't want to lose that. We definitely want to save that for sure. Uh, so, I'll conclude this video here, and next time we will actually play the game and do some things. Hopefully. 
Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Take care.